one of the region's top priorities for the years to come will be job creation. And we have been hitting those numbers for years now. Now it's time to act. 75 million jobs have to be created by 2020. And that's a 43% jump over what we have today. Just to put it into perspective, the US in its best eight years did 20% jump and we need to be twice as good. We have a very young population, more than half of it is under 25, and it's very entrepreneurial, energetic and vibrant, and that has proven so in the, in the recent Arab Spring. How can we take this youth and this skill set into creating jobs and into starting companies is going to be our role for the years to come. Couple that with the wealth of the governments in the Gulf countries and with the budget surplus there, then we start seeing a winning formula. However, the role now is how can we put the right channels, how can we activate the ecosystem so that those youth can take advantage of and move forward. And we need to focus on four enablers. Person enablers, and that's mainly education, and could be qualified on mentorship programs, on education in high school and universities. And then we have the financial enablers, which goes all the way down from microfinance to, to private equity and angel investment and venture capital. And I think here one of the missing pieces is the missing middle. The angel investment community is still weak, and we need to push more wealthy individuals to start being proactive with entrepreneurs. Then we have the business enablers. Those are qualified by the elements that are hyper-local in a particular geographical area, defined by business incubators, by accelerators, uh, by network associations and others that can give the entrepreneurs this element of serendipity as they interact in their local environment. And perhaps one of the biggest obstacles is the regulatory framework. As companies start up grow fr from being a startup, an idea, to an SME, regulatory frameworks start becoming a big obstacle. And those are opening a company, uh, liquidating a company, even uh, visas, issuing visas across border operation. All of those needs, need to be fixed and the government here should be very proactive in doing so. And part of the environment enablers is also how can we push the culture into accepting more failure. And it's not an, a cultural issue because a cultural issue is really tough to, tough to fix. However, here, with the help of education, and specifically the help of media and the press, we can push that. The media should be more proactive in covering innovation rather than covering politics. We should uh, put more spotlight on the entrepreneurs, and we should put more spotlight on stories of how entrepreneurs were able to go to the next level. And this is how we can push uh, an ecosystem and a whole society in becoming more entrepreneurial. Perhaps the sector that will create jobs the fastest will be the high-tech one. It's really a combination of new technologies, uh, the increased demands from users for applications, but most importantly, it's the low cost of entry for entrepreneurs to come in, create uh, products, create companies, and the next wave of jobs. So if we look at the US, for example, uh, that industry created four times jobs more than the national average. So it's really the fastest and cheapest way for uh, job creation. And the other asset that the Arab world has and has to leverage is the link back from the Arab world to its expat community. If we look at Taiwan, um, it is one of those countries, one of those case studies that was able to leverage this link very well. Uh, and this is what we need to do in the Arab world. We need to get back that knowledge from the expat community, both as knowledge and ideally as also as financial transfer, so that we can encourage and move our next wave of tech entrepreneurs as they're building their startups and creating the new waves of jobs.